Welcome to another edition of Closers. I am your closer, uh, the DA, David Ardsma, and this is with me as always, my man, the man, the myth, the legend, the Mets fan, James Coulidianos. Yeah, unfortunately, I am a Mets fan. It just hurts. Does it hurt? I remember you texted me two weeks ago, or you said, David, are you still sure the Mets aren't going to make the playoffs? Did I ever reply? I don't think I replied. You did reply, and you said it looks like they will make the playoffs. But I know. With baseball, it's so funny because, you know, the Yankees at one point were the best team in the league, then the worst worst team in the league. Now they're back up there. You don't know with baseball. It's just that's why you love the game. That's why it's not played on paper. I would say this. The Mets haven't been playing bad, but but I'll say this. The Padres and Diamondbacks are playing amazing baseball. And we'll see. We'll see where it all ends up. But welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. Uh, as always, we are the Otani talkers. We talk about Otani nonstop. We were the first ones ever. I'm going to say this. First ones ever to know about him. Even before his mom gave birth to him, we knew about Shohei. And that he's going to be a two-way player. So pay attention to the end of the show. James is going to give away more uh, Shohei Otani gear. Well, not Otani gear, but Stop. I have a special thing. I don't know. You said special package. Yeah. Well, it's a four pack of baseball cards, and I'll tell you what I got later on. So make sure you tune in to the end of the show. I will ship it to anywhere in the United States. Speaking of show, hey, Otani, the dude is unstoppable. Uh, if you've paid attention to my video, we're talking about the 50 50, how that's possible. But before you get to 50 50, you got to get to 40 40. The man did it. The man, the myth, the legend. He really, actually, true, the real legend. Uh, Shohei Otani, Showtime in Hollywood, got it on a walk-off Grand Slam. This dude is incredible. Yeah, when it comes to pressure moments, he hasn't had too many of them because he was playing with the Angels until now, so he didn't have much playoff experience. Well, any playoff experience. But if you remember World Baseball Classic, at the time, people thought the best hitter in the world, Mike Trout, going up against his teammate Shohei Otani. And how did Shohei Otani end the game? By striking out his former teammate. And now, even though he can't pitch and show why he's the best player in the world, and we'll talk about that in a little while, what does he do? He goes 40-40 and could become the first 50-50 man of all time. And I got to be honest, I love the fact that I was absolutely right about this guy in 2016, 2017 when I was talking about him. You were absolutely right about him. And and him just joining the 40-40 club is insane. And this shows you what he's capable of doing when he focuses on one of his craft. Um, it's What's nuts, too, is before the game, they, they video of him throwing a bullpen, his first bullpen like in public. Maybe there was some in private. I don't know what the official Dodgers word is on this, but he was throwing a bullpen. And so everyone, even, everyone was excited, going crazy about the fact that he was throwing a bullpen. And then he goes out there, does the imaginable, hits the 40-40 club, but with a walk-off Grand Slam, which is amazing. So now he is the sixth member of the 4040 club um to go down that list it's all basically been you know in recent memory guys that i grew up watching or, or even playing with uh barry bonds in 1996 uh he it, it, it was in the 4040 club oh my god my, i can't even talk about it because i'm so excited a rod in 98 acuna did it last year uh jose conseco did that in 88 with the a's Alfonso Soriano, which is crazy out of all of them. He's probably the guy you probably don't even think about, even though he was the most recent until Acuna. And he's probably the guy on the list. I'm like, yeah, like he seems like a 40-40 guy because he had more speed and and power. Alfonso Soriano did that in 06 with the Nationals. Of course, it was the Nationals, not with the Yankees. And then Shohei Otani joins that mythical, mythical group. Yeah, and what's crazy, though, before Otani, Alfonso Soriano had done it, done it the fastest, and he did it in 147 games. Well, Otani said, you know what? Screw you, 147 game. I'm going to do it in 126. That's actually important to say. It. 126 game. That's that's actually really important that he did it even faster, you know, because he, he's not playing all those games where Soriano played almost every single day. Uh, Canseco, you, you go down the list, all these guys, I mean, it's a pretty incredible how many games they play, and you kind of have to do that. So you got no rest. But this guy is amazing. He does everything. And, and when you watch him, He's not just hitting home runs on on fastballs up and and he's just he's parking them all out kind of the same way. You're seeing him hit changeups, sitting on changeups, and I love when you throw him a changeup. I know he just sits there and waits and waits and waits, and he'll drop and you'll look like he's given up on it, and then he just flings his bat at him, and it's gone. It looks like it's gonna be a fly ball to center field, and it's out by by ten 
you know, 10 rows. And then uh, I, I, A-Rod was the only guy on this list. So I'm going through this list again, right? Soriano, Canseco, Acuna, Rodriguez, Bonds. A-Rod was the only other guy on this list that you would see kind of get beat, but then just hold his hands and then just throw his hands at the ball. And it was just gone. Like when Soriano hit it, you knew it. When yeah. Canseco hit it, Soriano kind of looked like he had to try really hard and he would get it. Canseco, you knew, like, there was no doubt. He never got cheated. Bonds would never get cheated either. Like, Bonds never got beat. So you never really see him get beat and then so his hands. He, he always seemed like he'd be right on the ball. Acuna, same thing. Never looks like it was like when he either gets beat or hits the home run. It's, it's one or the other. You never see him just take a bad swing and then just save it and then throw the hands. Where Shohei and A Rod, they look like they're on another level of hitter where they're able to transform in a bat into, oh, I just got beat, but I'm I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm going to pull an Ichiro and just throw the bat at it, and it's gone. Yeah, I mean, the guy, he's... I, I mean, you said it in a, in a previous video. He wasn't even supposed to be a big-time hitter. He was a pitcher who hit a little bit. Now he's the best hitter in the game. And yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Judge in one second, but... Nobody expected him to be this kind of hitter. And the fact that he has evolved and gotten even better as a hitter while he can't pitch is absolutely insane. Now, I mentioned Aaron Judge. To you, David, what is more difficult, hitting 62 home runs or going 50-50? Ooh. Um, in today's day and age, oh, man, 60 home runs. I think 60 home runs, I think being staying at that pace all year is different than in this day and age with the the rule changes. I think every time you're on base, now everybody's stealing. Everybody's just thinking steal and, and you know, force the pitcher to pitch off, pick off twice and get him into a bind and, and just go. So I do think 60 home runs is more difficult in this day and age, in this game, being able to see the bullpens, be able to stay consistent, stay healthy. That I think that is tougher. Than 50 50. What do you think? Even though it's never been done, that's the crazy thing. Even though it's never been done, I think you're going to see. I mean, Acuna was 40 and 70 last year. You know, so you're going to see, I think you're going to see these numbers out of these kids, especially younger guys with power. You're going to see these numbers fly off the roof from a power standpoint, and steals are going to be higher from, from those guys just by natural, naturally the rules. Yeah, the way they change the rules makes it easier to steal. There's no question about that. In, in my opinion, when I look at the idea of 62 home runs or 50-50, I think it's harder to go 50-50 because you have to stay healthy. Yeah, you can still hit home runs if you don't have your legs underneath you, but you have to be able to run every day if you're going after that 50-50. Yeah, I, I and I agree. I mean, they're both so difficult. Mm -hmm. I I still just think just being able to on that pace, the 62 home run, the 60 home run pace is just so crazy. I mean, even Judge, Judge is nuts right now. Judge has 51 home runs uh, at the time of the recording of the show. He's going to have a couple more by the time you actually see it because that's just what Judge is doing. But his pace is still only 63. And it's it's crazy because he's on this, this pace of just insanity. And it's still only 63 pace. And then I sit back and think, well, Bonds did 70. Bonds did 70. And he walked more times than he had plate appearances. Um, or sorry, he was on base more times than he had official plate appearances. I don't, I think that was that year. Or maybe that was 04. But it doesn't matter. Like it, that pace is so crazy. I mean, think about this. If you're Barry Bonds, if Barry Bonds was this, I don't know if he could do it when he was hitting 70, but Bonds would be 70 50. You know, at that time, and, and you know, Bonds took away his stolen base game to just focus on the power. But I think he could have, in today's day and age, I think he could have been a seventy thirty guy, seventy forty, um, if he really wanted to go for it. I think maybe the only reason why I'm poo pooing, you know, uh, Judge's accomplishment is just because, yeah, he's going after sixty two, but the record is Bonds's, and he's not getting anywhere close to that. So for me, when I see a guy who's doing something that has never been done potentially in a fifty fifty, it's more monumental because it's something that hasn't been done, as opposed to you know Judge hitting sixty two. Well, he's still you know ten off. If Judge hit sixty two, James is he a Hall of Famer? No. And then he, but he got his ten years. He's not. He's not a Hall of Famer. He did sixty twice. I'm still not putting him in the Hall of Fame because, like we oh. talked about in the last video, 
Ryan Howard had a very similar trajectory and then he fell off. So I've got to see the totality of his career. The totality. What a stud. But speaking of Aaron Judge, you know, one thing we love to talk about is the New York Yankees, because why not? Because he's a he's a Mets fan. So we should talk about the Yankees more often than the Mets, because the Mets are the Mets. The New York Yankees. So, James, here's a question for you. And this is an important question in baseball. This important question with marketing and TV. Does Major League Baseball need a New York Yankees, a Los Angeles Dodgers World Series? Absolutely. They should be oh, licking come on. their chops. Come on. Begging. No. Come on. You have East versus West. You have American versus Foreigner. You have the guy who hits the most American home runs. American versus Foreigner, James. That is, uh, can you? Say, can we say that? Of course we can say it. He's a foreigner. He's not from this country, Otani. Yeah, but half the rosters are foreigners. Okay, but you're still talking about an American versus a non-American. Half the rosters are not American. Every roster is not a James Soto. Not even a man. Come on. But it's America's pastime. It makes a difference. Okay. It's not the Dominican's pastime. James. I can't, I can't win with you. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. But I get what you're saying. You got, you got Aaron Judge. You got uh, Otani. You, you got the two MVP. Like, you literally have the two MVPs versus each other. Yeah. And that's a yeah. big deal. You know, you, you're talking about how to energize the game. I, I mean, we debate it all the time. Who's better, Otani or Judge? Think about a World Series where you get to you get to determine that. Then you get to see what these two guys will do when they're under the lights, under the pressure. I'm dying to see it. I just need Otani to be coming out of the bullpen to close out Game 7 of the World Series in Dodger Stadium against judge the last at bat <laughs> just another little notch in his hat uh you like big did it against uh trout did it against judge how about that what if the ninth inning i'm just gonna say what if the ninth inning he steps up and the dodgers are up by one and he's got or, or they're going into extra innings they're up by one runner on second base whatever it is and you've got uh, Soto stepping up to the plate. You got Aaron Judge stepping up the plate, and you got Giancarlo Stanton. But they, for some reason, I don't know why, Aaron Boone's like stands for Judge's five. So Judge is the last batter that he faces. How absolutely epic would that be? But you know, in all reality, it's going to be a pinch hitter at probably you know for Giancarlo Stanton. So you, you know what I would do if I was in that situation. I'm glad you brought up the Otani uh, pitching, which I'll get back to in one second. But <laughs> it, um, considering that the Yankees have two players with an OPS plus over 100 right now, I just walk Soto and Judge and I let Otani pitch to everybody else because nobody else in that lineup can hurt you. Right. That's that's so true. I mean, Soto, looking at it right now, almost has an OPS plus of almost 200, which is an absolutely insane. And again, if you're watching the show, you don't know OPS plus. OPS plus is your OPS, okay, on base plus slugging against the league. So 100 makes you completely average, which is um, Jazz Chisholm, which is what they traded for in a big trade. Sorry, completely average player. And anything above that is they're basically, so an OPS plus of 186 that Soto has right now, that's 86% better than the rest of the league and judges 130% better <laughs> than the rest of the league, which is insane. You're the pitching guru. If Otani right now is throwing bullpens theoretically yes. can he be ready for the world series to come in out of the out of the bullpen oh theoretically yes so back at, this was 2010 yes he would be pitching in that last game he would be throwing he'd already be in simulated games he'd be throwing innings in minor leagues he'd be doing a minor league sent this this was exactly my trajectory um i had a little setback and that stopped me, but he hasn't had a setback that we know of. But most of the time, you'd be back within 12 months pitching. And he had he had surgery, I think, before the season was over with last year, right? I think in August or September, he had surgery. Something like that. I'm, I, yeah, so he would be right there on the edge, the cusp. He would be available. And the fact that he's already on the roster ready and able to pitch, he would be available. So, so that would be... Normal now, though they've pushed the timelines back a little bit, which absolutely sucks. I get it, health, whatever. But um, he might miss it. 
that would suck. But he could be on it because you got to think he's got all he's got the rest of August, he's got September, and he's got October, and he could have three weeks in October before the World Series. Theoretically, in all reality, he could be ready. And to just throw an inning, the problem is <laughs> it's a lot of stress on your first uh, their first inning. But either way, could you imagine those two teams? I get it. The Dodgers versus Yankees would be an incredible World Series. That's a World Series we all want because, I mean, outside, unless you're a fan base of anybody else, but because of just how massive that would be, how big it would be for the game. Now, at the same time, I don't think Major League Baseball right now needs it. I think Major League Baseball is actually in a really good spot. I think they're they're getting more engagement than they've got had a long time. Um, social media-wise, I think they're doing a very good job of promoting the game more. They need to do a better job of promoting players, We've talked about this a lot. They still need to be doing a better job at that. But they're doing a really good job of, of, of getting it out there, getting the game. I, I'm seeing the game more often um, on, on everything. And, but I'll say this, man. There are some other great teams out there. I mean, I, I want the Dodgers or a West Coast team um, just for the how big that would be, Dodgers-Yankees type of thing. Um just because, I mean, we've seen Houston so much. And we've seen, I'd like a different team, but Philly is a great team. Atlanta's getting better. And you know, if they get healthy and just figure it out, they're going to be a good team. Oh, don't, don't shake your head. Because yeah. if they figure Atlanta, it out, Atlanta's they, they've done. been a World Series contender and a World Series champion every year, basically. So I'm not going to count them out yet. Diamondbacks are playing incredible baseball, the best baseball of everybody. And they, for all these power rankings that keep putting the Diamondbacks like, six or something they're you're absolutely crazy because nobody's playing better baseball and that's my problem with power rankings like they're they're they are behind the best record of baseball by three games and that's the dodgers and they were like 15 or whatever 10 games back not long ago so they're the best team in baseball right now they're playing let me put this they're playing the best in baseball right now padres are right there too and then you're looking at um milwaukee i mean houston's playing okay they're they're still going to be in it, and then you're looking at the centrals kind of falling apart. Besides the Royals, and then you got the the Orioles and the Yankees. I wouldn't mind Orioles Orioles Dodgers would be a lot of fun. Yep, um, Orioles Diamondbacks would be like a whole new turning pa- of the page in baseball. You know that would be in- insane. The amount of like young players in that in that game, you know that they're kind of taking over. But again, I, I get it. Baseball would not be the world would not be watching. The world would be watching the Yankees versus the Dodgers. You know, since the universe hates me, there is a possibility that the Mets play the Dodgers in the NLCS and the Mets lose because of an Otani walk-off. Lose, I mean, I mean, if you're talking about like the first inning and losing, yeah, because they, <laughs> they, they would hit a home run and then Mets would never score again. I mean, you know, like, yeah, there's obviously those things. Like, I, I was, I was thinking at. about this last night. If there was only one MVP in baseball this year, who would you pick? Only one MVP in baseball? Yeah. Could tell Marte. <laughs> Wait, so <laughs> hold on a second. No judge, no Tani, you go Marte. Okay, no, I, but uh, okay, I'm going to say this. I'm going to make an argument for Cattell Marte right now as far as M- National League MVP. If the if the Diamondbacks don't have Cartel Marte, they are nowhere near where they are in the in, in the standings. Which to me is true, Matt. It's true, most valuable player, not best player. The best player is Otani and Judge. Most valuable, and that's why I think it's lost a lot in this. Most valuable, and the, the the Diamondbacks. He is top three in almost every single category. Here's the problem. Uh, top one is Otani in every category. Number two is Ozuna in every category. Ozuna, I would actually say, has a better argument than Cartel Marte. Uh, Mattel, oh my God. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> but Ozuna, Marte. Thank you. Marcel Ozuna is, is the true MVP of the league right now. Is the true MVP of all of baseball right now. And we all want to hate it. We all want to disagree with it. But you, when you look at the numbers and you look at what, what is holding the Atlanta Braves together, without him, they are 10 games out right now. They are, they're not even close to the playoffs. With him, they're the playoff team. Without without Judge, the Yankees are still probably a playoff team. Without Otani, the Dodgers are still a playoff team. That's the problem, is most valuable. Without Ozuna, the Braves are nowhere nowhere near the playoffs. The The Diamondbacks would be out of the playoffs, but the Braves would be so far out, they'd be dismantling the team. They would. You would be talking about the Braves as a complete dismantle. Now, 
with them. And they are the third spot in the playoffs and, and, and without a doubt, um, way better and much better team with, than without them. That Otani is the best player and, and Judge is the best player of the year. Um, so I still give it to Judge. Um, I would say if I had to pick one, it's Judge. But um, Otani's a close two. I don't care what Otani does. It's Judge's award right now to lose. If Judge stops right now and Otani keeps, keeps going, it's Otani. But Otani, I mean, again, great. The stolen base is wonderful. But a judge is judge is, judge is the best player right now in, in baseball, or just judges having the best season in baseball. Times the best player in baseball, and then you go down the list. The most valuable player is, is Marcelo Zuna. Okay, I'll see your Marcelo Zuna, and I will raise you a Bobby Witt Jr. Great, I love it. That's the only other person I, I'd, I'd argue with that. And and Bobby Witt, Bobby Witt Jr. without the Royals um having him would be the same place the Braves would be would just be floundering and I, I completely agree with you and I'm completely hijacking your entire argument here but I I love it and I actually put a bet uh about three weeks ago that the Royals would win the Central and they were the third place team in the Central at that time and I'm like they are coming and they're coming hard and the, the sorry <laughs> anyways but the twins and uh, the Guardians are are fading fast compared to how the Royals and Bobby Witt Jr. particularly is doing. And I will give you that. And I will and I will I will completely give you that from an American League standpoint. The MVP is probably Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, from National League standpoint, it is Marcel Ozuna or Cattell Marte with Otani in a third place. If you actually gave a crap about what the word of the the award is. See, there's one guy, and I'm not doing this because I'm a Met fan, but I will say there's one guy that you haven't mentioned at all. Lindor. Thank you. Absolutely. And Lindor still is a fourth in, in all those stats outside of hits. And the same time with hits, he's had like something like 15 more games than both those guys. So, so there's or, or whatever. There's He's played. He's had so many more at-bats. So many more bats, and the only stat that he he is with those guys above them is hits. And if you just take out those bats, he doesn't have the amount of hits that those other players have. So to me, it's it's is he has been a a great player, and it, he is the Mets MVP without a doubt. But I'd say this: until you get to the playoffs, you're not the most valuable yet, and you're just the you're the best valuable of the rest of the teams. You know that he's got a higher F war than uh, than Otani. I mean, F war my ass. <laughs> um, no, no, just- and I'll give you that. And again, there's words to look at it without a doubt. And I'm a big fan of war because it it takes out a lot of the BS. We still, I still don't necessarily agree with all of how war works. Yeah, but if you take it out, uh, if you look at it with without a doubt, it's it's there. And uh, now you look at some of the because of how much defensively he he brings to the game but without him i still think they're a fourth place team and they're a fourth place team do you know that no player in history has ever gone back to back 30 30 seasons and there's a possibility that this year we will have two Lindor and bobby witt really there's never been 30 you tell me ricky henderson ricky don't hit 30 home runs 30 stolen base two years in a row nah rick Ricky don't don't hit no home run like that. Ricky don't hit a home run like that. I think Ricky, Ricky just hit a bunch of twenties. Ricky didn't hit home runs like that because Ricky didn't feel like hitting home runs. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably it. To be honest, Ricky's like, no, I want to get on first base. <laughs> I had to take that ball. I had to hit it off the wall and just stop it first, so I can get yep. second and third and maybe even home. All right, I got one more question before we move on, and it's about marketing baseball, and we're talking about Otani and Judge a lot this uh, opening segment. Do you think there is any possibility that they bring back the old school home run derby, you know, prime time, get all the eyes on baseball and do an Otani versus Judge home run derby? I don't think it'll ever happen, but you tell me. Do you think that it- bring it back to Vegas too? Back to the old ballpark that they used to do it at, and then it was just like basically you take a bunt, a really hard bunt to first. That ball goes out. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And you what? Know sign up Bonds. Sign up A Rod. Let's do this. I would love to see an old timers home run <sighs> derby. How much would you love to see A Rod versus Griffey? I want to see an old timers home run derby where they actually give a damn. 
So the problem is, it's going to be a whole lot of oh, hey, great, here's your old team, here's the old guys that you remember and you love them. Um, I Ichiro, A Rod, Bonds, Griffey. Those yeah. are my guys. And you know what? I think Jose Canseco could probably step in there too because I think he would take it so serious that like, <laughs> I just want to see him. And, and then you know what? You follow them training and you follow them getting ready while, while Griffey's just golfing and doing his thing. Ichiro's straight in there stretching, doing the mobility stuff. You get Canseco just juicing like a monster, <laughs> pumping it out. Bonds is just... Bonds is just laid back on the beach hitting bombs. And, you know, you see him practicing, hitting home runs, like taking pitches, getting hit. I'm picturing Jose Canseco with a Bane mask and he presses the button and the venom goes in him and all of a sudden he's going, Arr! and just starts hitting home runs. Yes, I could see that too. What, oh, dude, dude, like, boom, and just, <laughs> and, like, everybody's doing it. <laughs> Why does everybody give Jose Canseco so much shit? The guy loves baseball. He's the original 40-40 guy. I know he was a steroid guy and he introduced the steroids to baseball. But at the end of the day, he was the only one being honest. Jose. I would say I would say this. There's two, there's two big things. Uh, one, he wasn't the first steroid guy. He wasn't the first. He was just the first big known name because it, it, you can see it. And, and that he was not by any means the first. And there's Lau Azedo died in what, the 80s doing steroids in football. So that stuff was well in the baseball long before Jose Canseco like, became famous for. It. Okay. But two, honest, yes, to a level. I think there's a line that where when you sell out your brothers, Everybody, almost everybody that was anybody that was doing it, right? But when you sell them out and basically say, you should tell the truth and you should tell the truth and you should tell the truth, we're all doing it. That's the problem. Let them make their own decision. You made yours. Yeah. And I think that's the problem is when you're, it's like when you're part of the club and you go, you start pointing fingers back at the club and say, guys, you have to all step up and tell the truth that we're doing this. It's like, no, dude, they want to lie. Let them lie. If they want to sell themselves out, let them sell. If they if they want to say I misremembered, let them misremember all they want, right? Let them do the cream and the clear. Let them do whatever. Just be honest with yourself. Saying I did it. I know more guys in baseball were doing it, but you know what? I made my choice. Let them make theirs. And I think that's my problem with with Jose. Not whether he's right or wrong, and I think he over over kind of shot the moon. It's kind of like when you're part of like a club that's drinking. Everybody drinks. Yeah. Or, or, people that that smoke everybody smokes well no there's a big group of people that don't and there's a big group of people that don't and there's a group big group of people that didn't do steroids um that's the problem like you kind he gave the first he kind of punched baseball in the eye and, and gave us the black eye um we probably needed it to be honest at the same time like he kind of took the big shot for everybody um but when you sell your brothers out that's it's kind of like when all the guys that that um, in the ninety four strike the scabs, you 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 cross the line, man. Yeah, Rick Reed. I don't know. I look at Canseco and all I can think about is him acting like Oprah in the eighties. You get a syringe and you get a syringe. Everyone gets a syringe, <laughs> right? It's crazy. So I used to know allergy shots in the big leagues, right? I was in major league baseball getting allergy shots and minor league baseball getting allergy shots. I had to give myself a shot every month, two shots every month. I had to get an. Uh, IED or whatever it is, uh, the night IED. I, I forgot what it was like. The the pass for Major League Baseball. They had to. I had to apply to Major League Baseball and get a, a, the ability to be able to even bring syringes, empty syringes with me around. So I had to bring it. Um, I had a, like an ice pack, everything for the little vials of the allergy medicine, which was approved by Major League Baseball. Got all went all through that packaging. Um, I had really bad cough for years that I couldn't breathe. <laughs> It was brutal and figured out that I, I had actually allergies, which then would trigger a um, asthmatic, or, which would trigger like my, um, a cold would trigger my allergies, which would trigger an asthmatic response. So you take take out the allergy segment, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have this cough, which was dis- debilitating. And, um, but dude, the amount of looks and the amount of stuff that I got, like people were looking at me like I was absolutely nuts, but my trainers would carry the vials. I had the, I would have the syringes and then, and then that, but I had to get like 
the amount of th- shit I had to go through and like the amount of looks I would get when I was like popping out a couple syringes in the locker room, people were like, David, we need to talk. And I'm like, no, no, I'm totally fine. And I'm like trying to like build my career back by lifting and stuff. Yeah, I got a lot of weird looks. <laughs> Anyways, not to mention the minoxidil and the uh, Viagra. <laughs> right. The, the, the loads of Viagra while I'm pitching, dude, blood flow. Let's roll. Let's do this. You don't need a cup when you got a. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> Speaking of syringes and guys uh, probably tore it all and, and stuff before games, the NFL season is right coming up right around the corner. I love it. You love it. I've done uh, three fantasy drafts, James. Have you done any fantasy drafts so I far? I haven't. And I don't think oh. I'm going to do fantasy this year, even though I love it. The Greek League. Come on, James. Well, the problem with the Greek League is they always do it on a Saturday, and I'm always working on a Saturday, and I'm not going to have some other chump draft my team. If it's not my team, I don't want it. Longest draft I've ever been a part of. I know. It's it's ridiculous. Like an eight-hour extravaganza by the pool at my buddy oh. Dimitri's house. But Brutal. It, brutal. Fun league. Brutal draft. Before we move on to the NFL, though, you're doing yourself a disservice. Do you realize how many young men in this country need pitching lessons? Yes. Yes, I do. And, and we've talked about this. I'm doing myself a disservice. I haven't talked about it enough. Guys, I, you know, one thing we talk about, Top Velocity. I run a company, Top Velocity Pro. Um, I do pitching development. I do pitch development. I do biomechanical analysis. I help pitchers. I, want, I make pitchers get to their dreams. That's my job. Um, I do it online. I do it on my house. I have guys travel to me. Man, I am here. I'm open service for everybody. And I'm um, one thing I always tell people is be really good at what you're. What, be great at what you're good at. And I'm fucking great at this, guys. This is what I do. I, I'm really good at. It. I don't advertise. This is the first time we've ever really been talking about it and advertising. This is a James um, telling me to push it. So I love it. Uh, thank you, James. But guys, reach out to me. Come on to my website, um, topvelocitypro.com. Go to at Top Velocity Pro on basically every single social media. Send me a message. Um, hit me up and let me know what you need. Just tell me what your issues are. Maybe we'll talk about it. Maybe I'll just get you know, free advice, man, all the time. Um, if I can help, I can help. So please hit me up. How about that, James? That work? What's your email address so they can get to you? Uh, DA at topvelo.city. So DA at topvelo.city, like top velocity. And if you mention James the Greek, I get half of the money that was supposed to go to DA. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. If you mention the show, I will hook James up. How about that? <laughs> no, I don't need to be hooked up. Thank you, though. You've hooked me up enough in my life. Well, that's my pitch for Top Velocity Pro. But seriously, if you if you do need p- baseball development, I, do, I work with catchers, infielders, outfielders, anybody who throws. I'm, I'm learning how to uh, teach quarterback stuff because my son, JD, is a quarterback. So I'm learning the biomechanics of quarterback. I'm I'm certified by everybody. Top Velocity Pro is my name, but I'm certif- I've am i been certified by everybody. I've gone to everybody. So I know exactly how it works. And uh, so I, I've been there, done that. Uh, but speaking of being there, James, now you don't interrupt me. The NFL. NFL is coming, coming baby. Up. Right. I love it. I love football because it's just you can just get into it and then forget about it. Then get into it and then forget about it. It's not like baseball every single day. Oh, what happened with the Diamondbacks and all that stuff? Uh, Candle, first of all, Candley Jansen. We, uh, or not Candley Jansen. Danny Jansen. We got to talk about this. We'll talk about it at the end. But the NFL right now, um, there are guys holding out. Guys holding out, I don't get this. It's my baseball mindset does not process this whole thing. Uh, when you sign a contract, you agree to it. But apparently in the NFL, these guys uh, are like, screw that. I want I want another contract. Brandon Ayuk is probably one of the bigger names along with C.D. Lamb. He is um, huge, obviously, a couple huge names. Uh, Hassan, uh, what was it, Reddick? Hassan Reddick of the Jets. C.D. Lamb is no longer holding out because he signed the contract. Good for them that they actually figured that all out. But it's been a, either way, whether he signed or not, it doesn't matter, man. This has been a problem. It's been a problem every year. What is your solution to this, James? What Do you have ideas? Yeah, I do. I think it's very simple. Like you said, they signed a contract. So you have to honor your contract. If I am a team like the 49ers and I have Ayuk under contract, I say, fantastic. If you don't sign by week one, you are on the ineligible list for the entire year without pay and you will be fined for holding out and let's see how many guys continue to hold out because their rights will still remain with the 49ers you still owe them a year and let's see how long you're gonna hold out for i think it's a little harsh 
I don't give a shit if it's harsh. The guy signed a contract. He doesn't want to honor it. Why am I going to sit there and bend over backwards for a guy who I agreed to terms with, and now he no longer wants to hold up his end of the bargain? That's a really interesting thing. It, it's tough for me. It's tough for me to, to get my head around it because I don't agree with the players. I also don't think the teams should be punished like that either. Because if you think about it, like they're losing a player. No, 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 no. Season. If no, if the guy is not there, then you get the roster spot back. No, 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 I get it. I get it. But when you when you don't have a CD Lamb, that hurts the team. When you don't have an Ayuk, that hurts the team. Not as much as Ayuk hurts the Cowboys if Lamb wasn't there, right? If, if Lamb wasn't there, that's a huge loss for the Cowboys. Massive loss. And they're pretty much just playoffs. Boo! <laughs> Whatever playoff chances they ever had. Boo! Um and I, I don't I don't it's hard because they, they lose they lose a huge playoff opportunity because a player's an idiot. Um and so I I, I I don't like any of it. To me, I, I, I always say this. You agreed to a contract. You overplayed your contract. Own it. Like that you messed up. Shouldn't have signed the deal. You know, like shouldn't have shouldn't have signed a deal that, that puts you in a position that you're not happy with your money. Because when you underplay your contract, you're not gonna go back to them like, dude, we should renegotiate this for less. You know, the the team will say that stuff, but you don't have to. Um I think this is a big problem with the, the with the players' association, and I think it's a huge problem with the NFL that contracts aren't guaranteed. That to me just blows my mind. That contracts are not guaranteed. That these guys aren't like because I think you would have you would have better health. I think you'd have better playing conditions. I, I think you had players that would actually want to play more if contracts were guaranteed. I, you would have some not play play less and whatever, like this kind of milk injuries. At the same time, you would have players come back healthy and play longer careers because they would want to be healthy to play. Yeah, they might miss two weeks instead of one week, but you would actually get players that were healthy and play longer careers and have better careers. I don't know. I think there's so many other issues there that to me, it's just, and especially in a sport like football with injuries the way they are, that the teams being able to cut you like I remember, I don't remember. It was like ten years ago, twelve years ago. They, the Rams or somebody signed somebody and literally cut them like two days later, and they didn't lose anything on the deal. Like this is crazy. The problem is the NFL Players Association is weak and they don't have any balls. Every time they go into a negotiation, they bend over and they take it in the rear from the owners. Yes, and that's the thing. I think the players, if the players got ahead of it and let the fans know, we just want guaranteed contracts. Our fans would agree with it. Yeah, I don't think like we don't necessarily want even want more money. We just want guaranteed money. You know, guarantee us that our our our, our health is is above everything you talk about in the NFL is that our, is health, 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 mental health, physical health, all this health stuff. And then we don't guarantee contracts, so they don't actually care about health. So if they just said, hey, if, they, if your health is your number one, guarantee our contracts so our, our players can feel like they can become back healthy and not have to sit out forever and 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 stuff like that. And I maybe give them bonuses for for hitting 16 weeks or, or 14 weeks. Give them playing bonuses. Play everybody standard bonuses for playing a certain amount of weeks, which then would incentivize players to play. You know, you can figure out stuff and have that as a scale on your contract. So depending on how much money you make, you make more if you play every game and less if you're if you're making less, you know, type of stuff like that, where you can do some cool things like that, that promotes like, hey, being on the field, because that's that is important. But at the same time, like, I want you on the field healthy. So, okay, sacrifice a little money here. So you're healthy the next week. I and I'd be okay with that. Yeah. The players desperately, desperately have to take a stand next time that they have some negotiations for the collective bargaining agreement and get this done where they get guaranteed contracts. It is sick to me that the 12th man off the bench for the New York Knicks is probably making more than half the running backs in the league. That's insane. Absolutely insane. I know the rosters are so much bigger and stuff, but it's absolutely insane because the amount of money coming in from the NFL is twice, twice, twice the the NBA um, and the 12th man. Is making more than like the, the second running back, and sometimes a lot of times the first running back. It's a, absolutely insane, and, and you know they're they're making money. They're making money off the season ticket holders. Is the crazy thing. That's that's the, one of their big money makers. And James, I know this pisses you off, but the fact that these owners force the season ticket holders to buy preseason games, 
I know makes you it pisses you off. It's it's the biggest load of crap ever. Like my cousin Dino, he's a season ticket holder for the New York Jets. And they force him to buy all the preseason tickets. Do you know how many starters played in the last game for the Jets? The last preseason game for the Jets? God, I don't know. Not many. Zero. None? Zero point zero. And I know the Bengals are doing that too. Like, what a joke. So I have to go. So let's get this straight. The players are contracted to play all their games. Cool. And they do play all their games if they're healthy. But the fans are contracted to buy all the games, but they can't see their players? Yeah. Awful. I, preseason football is one of the most frustrating things of all sports. Summer basketball, how that gets promoted. <laughs> WNBA, the way they're... Dude, I was watching ESPN last night, put it on, and I can't tell you. The amount of times I saw the Aces versus the Sky and how they were just talking about Angel Reese of like... What they forgot to show you is that she missed four shots in a row and got four rebounds. And oh my god, she had twenty rebounds. Oh my god, the amount of the, the, the there's some things in sports that frustrate me so much. Baseball spring training does not at all because they you you get the players. You might not at the very beginning. You don't get them for long. As they build up, about halfway through spring training, they're out there. They're out there. You're going to get half of the big league team no matter what game you're at. You're going to see half the team. Now, they, they will strategically play. Dodgers are playing the Giants. They're not going to start Kershaw or or Bueller, these guys, whatever, right? They're not going to start those guys, but they'll start the lineup. So you get nine hitters that are pretty much all big league roster guys or close to big league roster guys. The Giants are going to do the same thing. You're not going to start. You're not going to go out there and start their, their starting. You know, Blake Snell's not going to start that game. But... You're going to get so many guys out there that they're going to play. And then, okay, halfway through the game, three quarters of the way through the game, they come out and you see the next guys. But the beautiful part of this, those guys will be in the big leagues one day. Yeah. Or they'll be close. And then they'll be part of the organization. They'll be a part of a trade. So it actually allows you to have a further understanding of the organization. And like, oh, dude, I remember that guy in spring training. He was pretty good. Like, I saw him run down that ball in the outfield. Where in football, you see those guys, they're cut. And they're done. Their career's over. Yeah. And so they're working at my restaurant at Sea Bar. By the way, if you're near Staten Island, go to Sea Bar. <laughs> they're working at, in the kitchen at Sea Bar after they're done with the NFL. Pretty much. And and so I always say this, and James, I know this was not on our plan to talk about. We need a minor league football system. Minor league football system. You have this one. No, there is not. Yeah, it's called college football. No, there is not. No, there is not. That is not a minor league football system. That is a developmental program. That is not minor league football. What you need is minor league football. You need to have the draft, um, have the draft, a couple more extra rounds. And then what you're going to allow is those fifth and sixth and seventh rounders go down for a season and actually develop. Play. You have them play on Mondays. Uh, so Sunday, you have all the football games, right? And then you have your Monday night football game. They play on Monday. So those guys, you can call them up before the game and let them play on Sunday. So because if you had them play Saturday, then they play Saturday and then they can't really play on Sunday. That's that's bullshit. So you have them play on Monday. Um, every city like Phoenix, you put one in Tucson. You got one in New York. You put one on Long Island. You you got one you know, up there, too. You got the, the Giants. You put them in um, upstate New York. Whatever, right? You put it, but you have a minor league system, and so you learn these players. You let them develop, let them get bigger, stronger, faster, and you never know who's at twenty five who's going to be the biggest, strongest, fastest guy. I just hate seeing careers end so early with amazing athletes. I know this is totally off the rails, but this is something dear in my heart. I think it's absolutely crazy that we don't have a true minor league system. And I, I always say this: Tim Tebow wasn't an NFL quarterback. Team Tim Tebow, if he goes to the minor leagues. You never know what he would have done. You might, you know, I even gotten him to play tight end and play something else and just to try it and then develop into something or he does it. But you know what? Instead of the somebody taking a chance on him and he has to be your quarterback, no, let him develop and let those minor, all those guys that you just drafted this year, you spent all this money on these guys, let them develop in, the, in like a minor league system against better competition than college. And you're like, okay, like, you're, you're seeing it. My problem is when you have a system where someone gets drafted immediately out of college and you put them in the big leagues and they're they're already an all pro or the best in their position, that then you're not developing athletes. Thank God Tim Tebow had the ability to play minor league baseball and resurrect his career. Hey, he got the triple A, man. He's part of a very small group. Tiny, yeah. tiny little group. And he's even a smaller group. And he played in the NFL and played in professional baseball. Bro, if his name was James Cooladianos, he wouldn't have made it to AAA. He wouldn't have even gone to single A. 
Not true, because he was actually a, a big prospect in baseball in high school. Yeah, in high... All right, let's not oh, get into this. Whoa, wait, what? But that's happened before. At the end of the day, though, too, like he he could play baseball enough. He was good enough for AAA, and then and they and the game exposed him. And he wasn't a big league player, but at the same time, I'm just saying this: have a place where these guys develop, and not call it college because that's not development. That's called getting them ready for like to get drafted. That's called winning games in college. Let them be a minor league system that's above college and below, and you can move guys up and down. It would promote healthiness. It would promote guys to be healthy. It, guys would stay in your organization longer, and you'd get a lot of these guys that you think are nothing, and then two years later, you're like, dude, this guy's really good. He he was he was always fast enough, but he, now he's got the hands. Where a lot of these guys were cutting them long before they, they ever have a chance to really get good. Well, the uh, good thing is the Cincinnati Bengals for a long time had a minor league system. It was called jail. Yes, it was. And the Jets have a great minor league system. It's called just being the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to talk about one more thing. We got one more topic to talk about. Danny Jansen today made hit Major League Baseball history uh, as being the first ever player to play a game for one team and be play that same game for another team get traded midway through the game he was a toronto blue jay uh to start the year they're playing the red sox the game got suspended and god damn it if he wasn't hitting with one strike when the game got suspended due to rain he gets traded today uh, at 11 a.m. Uh, my time, that would be what? 1 a.m., 1 p.m. on the East Coast, uh, 2 p.m. on the East Coast. I don't know what it is. In steps, Dalton Barshow stepped up to the plate to pinch hit for Danny Jansen as Danny Jansen was catching for the Red Sox. So he got to catch his own at bat. That's so freaking awesome. That's going to be a trivia question for the ages. It's so cool. And I'm amazed it's never happened before where just like a team, somebody got traded and just happened to be the team that they had a, you know, a game against and they suspended because games get suspended all the time. Yeah. So I'm amazed that it hasn't happened, especially around the trade deadline when the rain's kind of East Coast, rain kind of starts a little bit. I'm amazed that it hasn't happened before, like that, that they played against themselves. Um, I've seen teams in the minor leagues and the big leagues where guys get traded before a game and they just pick up their stuff and go to the other dugout. Which is crazy. Like I've seen that plenty of times. I've seen mid game where guys get traded to the other team and they just switch dugouts and are like in the other dugout with their jersey on, like talking, meeting guys. I've seen stuff that like that before, but uh, to have it in his bat and him play, I think is just pretty special. What's 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 worse too is uh, is uh, who he Reese McGuire, who he took the job of of the Red Sox, was also the guy he took the job of at the Blue Jays. And got restrated, and then he took the job for the Red Sox and Reese, and then he got released. Um, so Reese uh, is probably can go in his car, go find some place to hang out. And- <laughs> Sorry, that's a horrible, horrible Reese McGuire joke. <laughs> All right, this is going off the rails. So before we say goodbye, let me just tell everybody how they can win the special Shohei Otani prize pack. Very simple. All you have to do, like, subscribe, and comment. If we reach 200 likes and 200 comments, I will send out to a random commenter slash liker a prize pack of a Shohei Otani 2018 Tops Japan's Finest that has both Otani and Ichiro in Otani's rookie season. I will give a 2024 Tops base card and two 2024 uh parallels from this year so make sure and maybe there might be a little special uh special bonus in there which i will discuss uh, i will figure out later on but make sure you comment make sure you like and i will send that out to anybody who wins as long as they're in the united states so you heard it here folks like this comment uh show some love send it to your friends uh, tell your buddies, tell your ex-girlfriend who you hate that they, they should watch the show. Talk about James, how much he is horrible. Um, but get out there and just throw some love out there for us. Um, but we will see you with the next show. This is the, the Closers, and thank you for hanging with us.